Good afternoon to all of you. My colleague or the one who appointed me in this college, Professor Krasta is here. Welcome to you too, sir. It is an honor to have you. <laughs> Former librarian of this college, Dr. George, who is the one who introduced me to the Encyclopedia Britannica. I never knew how to use that. He used to tell me how to use that. Dr. George is here. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> I had been to one more of my colleague, Professor Saldana is entering the hall. Welcome to you too, sir. <laughs> if at all I had been to Sweden, it is because of Father Leo and another madam, Dr. Shashi Kiran. Nice to have you, Madam. <laughs> Reverend Father Royston is here, sister is here, and uh, counselors, the counselor who coined the term Anubhuti is here, the counselor who is dealing with the Xavier students are here, and uh, Sana, Madam, and all my Dear students, of course, the present librarian and my colleague also is here. People must be wondering, this person who can be blown off by a strong wind, what can he speak about us? What message can he convey? <laughs> What message can he convey? I am also equally worried. <laughs> I never knew that a day will come for me to speak about uh, my life. I thought it, it is a pleasant experience to listen to somebody. But speaking about my own life is not a pleasant experience. At the same time, when uh, Father Rector or Father Principal or you ask me to speak about my life, it is not proper for me to say no. That is why I accepted it. I must uh, appreciate the efforts of the counselors and the organizing team for making this manub Anubhuti a reality. It was a concept earlier, just because of your efforts as a reality. I am grateful to the speakers. Father Vice Chancellor spoke about his life journey followed by Father Rector. I hope you have seen the YouTube video of Father Rector and Father Vice, uh, Vice Chancellor. Father Rector's uh, Anubhuti has got 11,000 views so far. In fact, I started my YouTube channel long back, thought many will be watching my video. I uploaded a video and I was working out how many will be watching that video. It was one first day, it was one second day, it was third on the third, third day, it was one on the third day also. And my wife was wondering, what are you looking at? I was, I told her that I am looking at my video and there is only one view. Then she sympathized on me, she started watching it and it was two. Why Anubhuti? We were discussing with my senior friends present generation is in their own echo chamber. Our generation, we used to watch the TV together. If I am watching a TV serial, my wife, my son and my daughter, everybody used to same watch the same serial. Normally, I am not the one who is deciding, it is my wife who is deciding and uh, once she is, we are asked to watch the same TV serial. Present day, husband is watching one thing in the mobile, wife is watching another thing, children will be watching some other things in the mobile phone. They are living in their own echo chamber, thinking that that is a reality. And the notification also similar. If you start uh, looking at uh, diabetes, watch one YouTube channel about diabetes, you will be bombarded with thousand uh, notifications and you will be understanding that every person in this world is suffering from diabetes. So it's true with any information they are browsed these days. People are living in their own 
echo chambers and there is no interaction people are not in a position or a mood to listen to the other people's story whatsapp status instagram reels are speaking only about the success stories you go to ice cream parlor have an ice cream on your table uh, tiramisu take a photograph post it at the status people think that you are eating gadbad throughout the day success stories are propagated not the failure stories in order to reach that success the effort that one has to past the struggle that has passed is not known to younger generations that is why i personally feel so many youngsters are finding it difficult to face the real life situations keeping that in mind the activity of anubhuti has been initiated and what to speak about my life story i was reflecting on this i felt it is better to divide into different chapters and speak it in such a way that you can answer two mark question four mark question or an essay question on that different sections of life my life let me tell you mine is a very very limited experience compared to father rector or father vice chancellor 60 years is not a big age and i was appointed in this college in 1987 30 how many years 37 years no 30 i am 60 just now and 37 years of my life is restricted to this campus itself so my life experience is very limited and i do not know in what message it can convey but i will try to put it as simple as possible let me pray almighty that the way in which i am narrating let it not insult or hurt anybody before starting my life journey i must remember the people who made me what i am <coughs> i am as father rector was speaking i am highly emotional person and uh, if i turn emotional it is not that i am very sad i live that moment first person who made what i am today is my amma these uh, mothers ammas in this nation are not actually human beings they are a value systems they don't live for themselves they live for their children wherever they go they don't wonder whether i will be comfortable there they are thinking whether my son or daughter will be comfortable there what i am today is because of my amma i remember she used to chase me away to the school but the first chapter is about academic life first chapter is academic life and normally we never had lkg ukg pre kg post kg all these were not there straight away we were asked to go to the first standard and we were reluctant to go and my mother used to chase me away and the school was about 1 and 5 kilometers 1.5 km from my house that was the schooling that i had in kannada medium and the facilities were very simple there but that is the one which molded my personality in the schools we used to play a lot we used to sing we used to act in uh, plays and give speeches especially the independence day celebration was excellent one we used to go on processions and used to give speeches there and uh, activity once in a year it was a school day school day is normally in the month of uh, march and the preparation normally starts in the month of september itself these days friday is the college day the practice starts on thursday and saturday it gets over our days it was six months earlier preparation next six months we used to enact the same place at home itself so that was the pleasant experience that i had had and my personality has been influenced greatly by that school that school is my place is uh, about 60 kilometers from this place kidur village it is a small village near kumble and uh, 
my father had some agricultural land and he was uh, a temple priest in the nearby temple and uh, you must know the we belonged in different section altogether the temple priest you have to perform the puja three times a day and before entering the temple you have to take the bath in the nearby pond same even if it is raining or if it is sweating you have to take the bath go to the temple perform puja and come back again after it about 10:30 again go and put do the puja after taking the bath again at 7 o'clock and then i do the same thing in his absence i used to do puja and you must know the what is called the sanctum sanctorium no it is there is no ventilation there only two people can remain there that is one is god and one is yourself only there is no proper ventilation and uh, uh, entering you must look at the um, height of the door it is only 4 feet 4 feet is the entry height of the any sanctum temp sanctorium so i used to do puja there schooling is done there in that village then we have to go to high school i never had high school in that village itself so one of my maternal uncle's house had a school very close to that house and of course uh, my maternal uncle's uh, son was an iit product he was uh, working abroad and they suggested that i can do my high school there and i was asked to go to that place to my maternal uncle's place believe me i could not study there at all i was so homesick and whenever i used to open my book i used to see my mom's face there could not read at all could go to the school i could not listen to the teaching at all and uh, somehow i conveyed it to my teachers and uh, there was one kind teacher who allowed me to get a tc so i started in that school for two weeks and took the tc came back to my native place and i used to i was admitted to government high school high school kumbala kumbala high school is about 8 kilometers and uh, we have to walk about 2 or 3 kilometers catch a bus and uh, go to the school did my studies in that school after schooling the next one is uh, college i wanted to come to mangalore to st- do my studies somehow my father and mother they were not very happy with the mangalore because they felt it's too far and uh, financially is not viable also those they felt that is better to go to government college kasaragod and i was uh, admitted to government college kasaragod you know the situation in the government college i do not need to be maybe different these days then almost on the alternate days students used to go on strike they used to say vidyarthi ekam zindabad and no classes on that day i used to go there and i used to come back and i used to talk to my mom saying that say you admitted to that school and there are no classes at all that was and which to select we did not know which that to take science commerce or arts it gets somebody suggested it is better to take science i took up pcmb and those teachers used to speak in malayalam my mother tongue is kannada i never understood anything so i could not follow much of the things somehow completed uh, pdc there it is called the pdc then after pdc it was again uh, degree kerala has got three major system for puc single major for degree so which one to take again just uh, accidentally i took physics as major not much fascination about physics i took physics and you must know there are kerala bsc seats are limited only 12 seats for bsc kasar god government college is going to 12 seats for bsc after bsc then what to do again for msc uh, somebody suggested better to go to andhra university i at that age i traveled alone to andhra university assuming that i will get a admission into andhra university but unfortunately when i went there the seats were filled i have to come back you must remember you must visualize it i told my parents that i am going to andhra and will be coming back after one year then this pero i go there and don't get a seat for admission and came back after one week itself fortunately i got an admission to government uh, brandan college telisheri again uh, telisheri situation people are familiar you don't get any vegetarian hotel there i am a pure vegetarian and uh, those are tough days for me somehow i could get into touch with another person we used to prepare the food for ourselves 
and uh, managed uh, MSc. Immediately after MSc, I got uh, saw the advertisement about uh, this college and uh, attended the interview. Professor Krasta was there asking me some questions. Somehow I could answer the questions properly, I understand. Some of the priests were there. I could not understand their English also. So one of the priests asked, what is polytaxis? They say, what do you mean by bias? So I never knew. I could not answer the question, but subject questions I could somehow answer. Appointed here and uh, the, maybe if you proceed because the academics, then I did that doing PhD is itself is a big challenge. You will know what is uh, that challenge only after six or one year. You will know what is PhD after two years. And the moment you complete everything, you will realize that somebody other did that work. So that is what happens in the case of PhD. It was a, somehow I could complete PhD. That is mostly the academic life. Maybe I wrote some papers and recently I got selected for the committee as NEP member. If you look at the family life, my, I am the fifth son. My two brothers, are, elder brothers are there, two elder sisters are there. These days, uh, people may not even understand. Can there be a family having five or six members? During these days, we had a families having 12 members or 14 members. So, I am the fifth uh, member and uh, my brother's got some small business. My sister is in her city. One younger sister is in Bangalore, got married to a high court advocate. And uh, I got married on uh, December 6, 1992. I hope you remember the importance of that day. And uh, got my son. Uh, son was born in 1994, and uh, daughter 2002. Please don't tell all this. don't tell them that I don't remember the dates properly. So, uh, son is uh, a software engineer. Got married recently, and uh, we have got a granddaughter. My daughter is studying her uh, MBBS internship. That is about family life. What else? Mm -hmm. Academic life is over, family life is over, then uh, financial life. <laughs> financial life, when we joined the profession, we are paid 1,040 rupees. That is our salary. And uh, with that 1,040 rupees, I could manage my expenditure and I used to send some money to my sister who was studying her uh, BA there. So 500 rupees, I to, we used to live in a hostel that uh, two sharing or th one, three sharing rooms were there near that uh, uh, ho Sujata Hotel, even this is not existing these days. So we used to uh, remain, uh, spend our time there. Financial life, so it was 1040 for some time and uh, after one or two years it was uh, 1890. You must imagine with that salary, nothing can be done. And after maybe 1997, we started a publishing company. It is my wife's initiative. We started a publishing company as Vinyas Publications. And uh, that was doing well. Vinyas Publications, we had uh, about 100 titles. And we had about 20 members working for us. And uh, it was doing a very good business. That is how we could acquire some of the properties or uh, real estate uh, in that direction. That is about the, about the professional life. Professional life was not that pleasant initially. Again, you can make out, no? See, those were the days when you used to engage PUC classes. Degree students are much matured. PUC in a class of 90 students, they may not let, look at uh, you at all, they may not listen to you, and there is a lot of galata in the classroom many times. It was uh, really a challenge to handle them. Thanks to my dear colleagues, somehow we could uh, manage it, and uh, classes were going on well. Then after that, uh, there was a bifurcation. We were deputed to PUC. I was teaching only for a PUC class for a few years, I remember. Then we came back to degree. Then reach to father uh, various principles to support me initially it was for the leo father leo is a, uh, a saint like person i have not seen such uh, people so far he is the one who encouraged me a lot or he encouraged everybody for that matter i used to speak in a very special uh, language we i used to manage with a very small vocabulary of about 60 words and that too with the malayalam accent and he is the one who asked me, Narayan, but you record your lecture once and find out what could be improved. 
So I recorded my voice and they attend some courses. It is because of Father Leo's guidance I could uh, improve that. And uh, Father Sweebert is the one who made me in charge of some committees. He asked me to be in charge of the timetable committee mostly. Initial days, no, I was not mixing with people. I felt it is better to avoid any responsibility. That was my way of looking at life. Whatever is this task given, just avoid by some excuses. Later, I realized that I am going to lose something if I don't accept the responsibility, took up the responsibility of uh, creating the timetable for the college. Then so many responsibilities are given. Father Pravin is the one who gave in the post of the directors. And um, it is, you know, who, it is a pleasure to be the director for the Xavier block. Which uh, dimension of life is remaining now? It is better to have interaction if at all you want me to. Let me find out whether I have left out anything. Okay, one more important aspect is uh, our uh, sp spiritual life or the religious life. Again, let me admit we could belong to a very special uh, category or community and we are supposed to perform different uh, rituals daily. I was not doing anything at all. And when um, we asked my son was of the age of seven. We were supposed to offer what is called as Brahma Padesham. And we arranged the function. Brahma Padesham was fantastic. And the object of Brahma Padesham is to give the Upadesha. And to give the Upadesha, I must have something, you know. So I was not doing anything at all. Without doing any rituals, how can you offer Upadesha to my son? I started exploring and once after the Brahma Padesha, my son, I started performing my Sandhya Vandana. And later I felt it is necessary to do it, gives a lot of energy to you, and started performing it. The, after marriage, you are supposed to perform some more uh, rituals. I was fascinated towards it and used to visit uh, the religious places. Of course, uh, I must uh, remember my guru, Raghveshra Bharati. He is a person who guided me in every respect. I must remember one more person, Repetus Mr. Gangadhara Bellare. Gangadhara Bellare is a counsellor. He was expert in the field of transactional analysis. He used to conduct the classes continuously, eight hours per day, two days without any break. And we used to attend, some other members who used to attend the class are here. So it is he who molded my life very much. So that is about the spiritual life and I advise you to go for SIP. SIP is well known in the stock market, systematic investment plan. Every day or every month or every week you invest 10,000 rupees. Some days share will be higher, some will be lower, you will get sufficient number of stocks. I wish that you invest SIP in the field of knowledge, in the field of health, and in the field of finance. Every day, if you invest some time studying some new topics, imagine how much you can learn in your lifetime. Every day, if you spend some time on your health, think about your health in the future. This is very, very important according to me and I have learned so many things because of this SIP option. If you feel like asking anything, you can feel free. I personally feel it's not a good practice to speak like this as a one-way communication. I did a survey through Sahastra Madam. 
to find out what exactly students look for. This is my advice to my dear students. First of all, improve your uh, body language and tone of language. According to me, your tone and body language matters more than your words. Try to improve that. I used to inform my students who were approaching me to correct it if at all there is a difficulty and love your family very much. You may be having friends here but when you are in difficulty it is your family members who will be supporting you. Master money. At this age itself you will start investing. Whenever you got some vacation, study about the stock market or any option, mutual fund, whatever is possible and start investing. Look at the story of Junjun Wala. I hope you are familiar with the Junjun Wala. Junjun Wala started investing at the age of 20 itself. Start investing money. How or better, avoid negative thinking people. There are people who speak negatively about anything. Please run away from those people. They are very, very dangerous people. If at all somebody is insulting you, please remember, it is their quality. It is not your quality. If somebody is insulting you, please remember, it speaks about themselves, not about you. Focus on your work. This age is the age to study. Study well. We do not know whether whatever study is important in your life for your life. But it gives a confidence that you can study any new topic. This is uh, my message for the time being. I am leaving at this point. If at all you have any other thing to ask, you are more free to ask now.